Okay, hi. So, uh, I want to talk today about what I see as the intersection between modern corporate IT strategy and board games. Specifically, a one particular board game that some of you may have played before. Uh, the Total Magic Catan is this board game that in 1995 hit the scene, and it's probably the, the Euro game that kind of put Euro games on the map in terms of getting people outside of you know, Germany at the time actually playing ba games like this. Uh, it's a strategy game that is deceptively simple. So like in the base game, there's pretty limited routes to victory, like build the longest road, have the largest army. And I feel like sometimes in, in the past, it seemed like for IT strategy, it could just be like, just buy something from Oracle, buy something from IBM, you're done. But in the, so the Cities and Knights version of Catan, it's actually a lot more complex. There's a lot of routes to victory. And it does feel like we have a plethora of choices today. A lot more things to think about, consider. It kind of reminds me of, um, in the, this history of Silicon Valley, uh, Accidental Empires talks about, you know, um, uh, Cringely has like this, uh, this, this mental model that Simon Wardley later describes as pioneers, settlers, and town planners. And it, it kind of, thinking of the settlers, of course, I always think of settlers as Catan. And it may, reminds me of, there's always innovation, and sometimes you have those developers who are definitely going to be yellowing some, something out to production, possibly causing chaos in your infrastructure. I really did set this board up to try to show a like valid Catan board, and the cat had nothing, it would have none of that. Um, and like you can't really productionalize that stuff. You kind of have to get somebody in to say, okay, you got your proof of concept. Now let's build this up into something that we might actually be ready to put into production. Kind of that settler mentality. I definitely put myself there. Um, you know, and if you're trying, by the way, in Catan to go for a monument, Sheep is a place that is okay. I like paper a little bit better. Um, but thinking about all of the resources, all of the commodities, or all of the, like, running a Markov bot against the front page of Hacker News to implement stuff in production and your infrastructure the next day. There's so much disruption out there that I think it's a little tempting to think, hey, you know, we're like FinTech. Uh, we have these interlopers coming to eat our lunch. The, that relentless pace of the, you know, the pirate ship coming. What are we going to do? Choosing to go the way that some people who publish Magic Quadrants want you to, of like bimodal IT, I'm going to tell you right now, you should definitely not do this. Dividing your organization up into, you run in sad mode and you run in awesome mode, it's just, it's not going to be very DevOps of you. It's not going to work super well. Um, instead, like think about your strategy in terms of something like Wardley mapping. There's some really interesting blog posts that this thinker, Sandlin Wardley, has put out there that you can kind of look into the details of. But it's basically, uh, you need a map to figure out where you are, where you're going. You're thinking you, you would probably like to go, you know, figure out where Mortar is. Like that's pretty important. But you also, you need the ability to say, these are the things that are our, our core competency. These are the things that are going to be differentiating business value for us. Um, we probably don't want to focus on the things that are just what everyone else is doing or the things that are not going to make a difference to you in the marketplace. So like, for example, if you're um, looking at things from one perspective or another, is this a duck or a rabbit? Well, like spoiler alert, in IT, the answer is always going to be it depends. It depends on your perspective. It depends on what's important to you. Like, they, they knew this apparently ages ago. I got to tell you, by the way, since it's election season, we're marathoning the West Wing, and we just got to that uh, giant block of cheese episode. And like, why is everyone thinking, why are they changing maps? And it's like, there's, there's so many ways you can look at things that you think you have a perspective on, and then you realize, wait, no. Just like, okay, I love this, I love this line, because like, so if somebody tries to, I, got, I work for a vendor, but if somebody tries to sell you the easy button, like, it probably isn't, but... There's so much complexity out there that you do need something that will make it a little bit easier, right? Also, like, the map is not the territory. Uh, a container is not a platform. Like, components are not the whole. And, like, trying to get that correct perspective, I think, is one of the big challenges in IT. For example, we spend a lot of time thinking about things in abstraction layers. It's like abstractions and turtles all the way down. I mean, Greet said, this is not a pipe. He can't put tobacco in it and smoke it. Like, it's a representation of a pipe. Figuring out which level of abstraction it makes the most sense for you to put your efforts into makes a lot of difference. So that's basically, that's it. Um, I'm with Pivotal. You can come over and talk to us about things like that. Or I'd be thrilled to talk about board games with you because, you know, Catan is totally fun. 
All right, I'm probably at my time. Thanks.